Maybe way we're all like these jumping shrimp because even though the camera's on us, we don't want to jump away. They don't really care that the panopticon is around, spying on them. They don't want to do anything drastic. Hey, it's your boy Felix again with another extraordinary food video. Back here at the family hacienda in Pidig, Ilocos Norte, a few days after we filmed the ant egg videos. I'm back here again to do another video featuring live jumping shrimp. To serve up this jumping shrimp, we have two options. One would be to serve it like ceviche style or what's known colloquially as kilawin. But we opted for the simpler option because we wanted to taste the freshness of the shrimp or the pure essence of the shrimp with just Ilocano vinegar and some calamansi. Uh, Jumping shrimp are quite big. They're moving. They're not hyped up or anything. Just placid. I wonder if we can get closer and then if we won't get to the camera with the lens. No? You know why we're all like these jumping shrimp? Because even though the camera's on us, we don't want to jump away. The camera shy. No, they don't want to. They don't want to hop out of there. Either they're like Michigan J Frog of shrimp, or they don't not. They don't really care that the panopticon is around, spying on them. They don't want to do anything drastic. So far I can say this is kind of like the potential of eating an aquarium or eating a small aquarium. If you ever wondered what that's like, that's probably what this is like, except we just gotta put the sea make the seasoning for it. So our cook actually just added the calamansi to the shrimp. I wonder if the acidity cooks the shrimp live. I mean, just like it would regular ceviche. But hopefully not too much, but they look sedate rather than jumping. Did that do them in as far as the citrus? Oh, once I No, when he puts the vinegar, then they'll be jumping. So I think that's a small bowl. Huh? <laughs> I take it these are freshwater shrimp, it's the reason why we add salt? Yeah, they are fresh. Okay. They're uh, from the river. Yeah. So you can add sukang in loco? You mix, mix, mix ka ng dalawa kasi hindi yung maasin. Sir? Medyo mahal tamis ka ng konti. So konti niyan, tapos konti. Mm. Okay, he's gonna put sukang in loco. Mm -hmm. And then he's gonna use also the white vinegar. Mm. This is a little bit of sweetness. But... Yeah, I was about to say, if you put all sukang in loco, it would be too dominant with the sweetness. Okay, there's one trying to jump. <laughs> so yeah, the shrimp are ready. Just all it needed was some meat, some two different kinds of vinegar. 
one sweet, one not so sweet, and uh, some salt and some calamansi, some citrus. The mango, that? You taste that? Oh, that's a Oh, Jesus, look at life. How about the salt? What's the content? Alright, I know I promised a jumping shrimp, but I only got like one or two to jump. Oh, there is a couple. Um, it takes some stirring, I guess, to get them kind of roused. But the thing is, the vinegar and the calamansi kind of um, subdues them a bit. And to be honest, these were quite placid to begin with. Okay, there we go. There it is. Are we ready, JP? Oh no. Oh no. This is still moving. So just tear off the head, right? Do it without the head. Ooh, the okay. Head. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Man, I feel sorry for this Are we ready? One, two, three. Model. <laughs> this is the way. Yeah. I'm going to show them people the way. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what I did! You hit the head and everything? It just tastes like, um... Is it still moving in your mouth? How does it taste like? It tastes like shrimp. Like it tastes shrimp, like shrimp cracker. Shrimp. It's a weird thing. It doesn't shrimp taste... scampi kind of type of texture, right? Except not cooked. I don't know how to explain it. It has a shrimp cracker texture for some reason, but except that it's because there's quite a bit of chew involved. It doesn't dissipate like a shrimp cracker at all. Eat the whole thing. There we go. One, two, three. This one, eat this one. As long as you get a bit of meat in there, yeah, you got a nice. Um, this has got a sweet um, meat texture to that. It's like um, <laughs> that one's really alive. <laughs> this one's alive. <laughs> I think. Jumping. So put it in your mouth and let. Don't chew it. Don't like. Oh, you. Hmm. It's not alive no more. <laughs> you call it jumping salad. <laughs> this is a sleeping salad. How come they're not jumping? Jumping. I think, jumping. I think it needs more vinegar. <laughs> it's almost too. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Dad says it's okay. Okay. I mean, you actually really do taste the pure essence of the shrimp. Oh, uh, how will I describe it? Um, like I said initially, it kind of tastes. They said they're coming. It kind of snaps like a shrimp cracker, except that it doesn't dissipate like one. Because there's so many crunchy bits with the head, and so many crunchy bits with the leg, and so many crunchy bits with the shell. There's a little bit of a sweetness, I guess, to it. Very fresh. That's for sure. It tastes like very fresh. Like if I were eating shrimp sashimi, yes, that's what it would taste like. Or lobster sashimi, that's what it would taste like. Um... Other than that, I don't think it's absolutely like um, the very best. You I know wanna, what? I want to go out wait, to wait, the wait. store and run to go buy that or make that dish. Although it makes me wonder, what would it taste like if you put kilowen? If you made, if you really did make it a kilowen, or that's better with chili pepper. Maybe we'll bring out more flavor because yeah. that, to me, that's the big thing lacking. Is it doesn't have the big flavor. I think it needs a big flavor to complement it. Yeah. Bring out more of. Um, that shrimp flavor, I think. Because to me, it just tastes very plain. <laughs> Alright, guys. Um, there's some more interesting food on the table. So I think I'll just talk about those as well. Alright, so that jumping shrimp is a stunt. But, you know, not a lot of, you know, fanfare with that. It's fine. But we got some other interesting things here. So these is what you call ipon. So not in Tagalog, it's like hipon with H. But it's a very different thing. 
this IPON. This is a very small freshwater fish with some tomato and some garlic. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put some on my plate here. Nice healthy bite with some tomato and some garlic. Next up, I'm going to get some pinak bet. So I have some pinak bet here. It doesn't have the pork here, I don't think. It's just all vegetables, a whole lot of local vegetables. So it's an Ilocano specialty, and a lot of parts in the country will serve this, but the best you'll find here in Iloco. So you got some eggplant, some bitter melon, and I think this has some pavda, right? What do you call it again? Pavda? Pavda. Pavda. So palang, these... Palang. 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 So take some of that. A nice crunch. And it reminds you of like um, edamame or snow pea. That's what it would remind me of as far as the taste goes. So I'll put some on my plate as well. Get some more of that okra. Some bitter melon. And I especially love the little peppers. There we go. They have pinapaitan of or papaitan in Tagalog. It's just my soup of innards. You probably, if you had seen my goat video, then you will know what pinapaitan is like. So this one is a cleaner type, and this one is of beef. Put that, put that there. And this is some kilowin, but of beef, and we don't really have too much of it. And it's basically a lot of meat and innards cooked with some vinegar and um, also some bile, which is also goes in the pinapaitan. And lastly, I mean, we're, we're, we're crossing food frontiers here. This is pancit. I mean, oh gosh, I mean, this is so out of the ordinary. You'll never find this anywhere. Pancit. It's the most interesting dish out here, pancit. You don't find it anywhere. Oh goodness, I barely got any noodle out of that, but whatever. So I have that medley of food and I haven't gotten any rice yet because, you know, me not really caring about rice. I'll try some of this hipon with some tomato, fish sauce, and ginger, I think? Ginger. Yeah. Ginger. All right. Gosh, it looks like our ant egg salad again. Mm -hmm. All right, let me try this. It's not it's pretty good Nothing really there's nothing off-putting about it. It just tastes I Wouldn't really know that it's fish, but I could probably tell that it's a bit of fish in there, but it's not it's not um, It's not there's no overwhelming fish taste at all whether it's like a saltwater thing or a riparian sort of thing No, it just yeah. Not that it's not flavorful, but uh, kind of plain, right? Bland, used to the word we would say. Um, I think it's solid. I think it's pretty good. The texture's kind of, uh, I don't know, do you look, like have little bones or something? No. No? I, no. It tastes like a grittiness to it. Just a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. It just reminds me a little bit of a dry sinigang, if it were such a thing, like a dry fish sinigang. Except there's like not as much body, and then there's um, no as much sourness. Mom's just telling me that we can only, only catch these in February. Oh. So they're like special. Yeah, this is a definite provincial rarity. From if you've overheard that, you can only get this in the month of February, which is the month we're filming this. Um, yeah. So okay. Next thing, let me get some peanut. Uh, peanut butter. No, let's try some peanut bed first. So I'm gonna get some eggplant. I think you should eat this with rice, to be honest, but you know, like I said, for the sake of just trying it out for a little bit, I will forego the rice for now. If you ever had ratatouille, or like the French summer vegetables too, some people liken that pinak bet to that. Um, and in some way, it's sort of true, except you do get a little more of a shrimp paste kind of taste to it, but actually not too much in this, uh, which is a good thing because sometimes you can get overly salty with that. And I think it's because meat is not included. Because typically when you 
put some like fried pork in there, it starts to render off and then it lands into it. It gives a nice meaty deliciousness, but it also adds more salt than you would. And you also put some shrimp paste and that compounds the salt. So this is a more fresh tasting vegetable medley. And you need that bitter in there too. It, like it was the bitter gourd, but it's not like very powerful though. It's noticeable, but it's not yet. Overpowering. Yeah. So if you guys are scared of bitter melon just because of the taste, um, just know that its bark is louder than its bite. And now, if you ever have the bitter leaves, that will give you a run for your money as far as what bitterness goes. But that's for another day. Uh, what should we go for? I think I'll try this papaitan. papaitan. <laughs> This looks, um, you can tell from the soup here, it's a bit fatty, but not too fatty. It's based off like the sheen off the broth. I think I'll help myself to a little bit of tripe. Mm -hmm. That's quite good. Mm -hmm. Very nice beefy broth and just a nice, just enough bitterness in there. I'll get some more of that. Really it is tasty. It is beefy without being um, too rich. Mm -hmm. And then the bile taste in there is just, you know, the right touch of it at the end. A little sourness to it too. A little sourness as well. Yeah. Tangy. Just a little tangy. Again, it's nothing that's off-putting as like what you would think is put in here. Uh, now compare this with the goat pinapaitan we had for Christmas with our live full goat in that video. That is more punch you in the mouth type of um, melange of texture and um, and I didn't think that was very bitter, but it's just a melange of flavors that are and textures that some people will find a little weird. But this is just tastes like beef soup that's just quite rich and just a little, you know, just slightly sour, slightly bitter. The goat had a more gamey flavor too, I think, right? Yeah, that, that kind of like. It, it wasn't a goat head, but mm -hmm. but the goat definitely lends a gamier type of flavor. But and that's the flavor they kind of like around here. Mm -hmm. I've noticed. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, that goat peanut pie tan is like gamier. This is being beef. You won't find that sort of you know gaminess that I guess Westerners find a little you know strange, right? Okay. I think I'll just go for a bit of this Kilowen. So, Kilowen is made out of the same things as Pinapaitan, except that it's um, cooked and it's, uh, well, it is cooked. <laughs> but um, it's usually served at room temperature and chilled. And it's more of a dry type of thing. And of course, what you should taste is more of the onion and the ginger and the aromatics in it. All right, give this one a whirl. This is good too. It has nice texture from the liver. I think it got a livery bite off of that. First time I tried it mm -hmm. with liver. Yeah. That has actually been cooked in the citrus. Mm -hmm. Kind of. I'm not a, a liver lover, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Pretty decent. I mean, mm -hmm. you can still feel the sponginess of the liver, though. Yes. Right? Of course. Yeah. So, like cooked liver, kind of like. Breaks apart, mm -hmm. like uh, I don't know how to explain it. Right. Kind of breaks apart, right? Kind of chalky. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. This one's not. No. It's kind of spongy. Well, and the other thing is too, it absorbs some of that seasoning as well, mm -hmm. especially the citrus. Yep. Okay, last thing, and I swear this is the last thing. We're gonna eat some pancit, which you know. I mean, I, 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 I'm scared trying this too. I mean, I mean, I, I would be too. And I didn't get many noodles off this, so it's more of the raw ingredients. I think there's mushroom in here. There's shiitake mushrooms. It's kind of different that usually you don't. That's a very luxe sort of pancit that we got here. Kind of a, yeah. Oh man, it's strange. I mean, of, of all these things that we've had at our table, this is the strangest of all: shiitake and pancit. Okay, but not much noodle, huh? All right, just a bit. But, this is a pancit I can get on board with. Because I definitely love the mushroomy taste. And I, I think pancit, in my opinion, I've slated it in my past videos. Gosh, what a boring dish it is, right? Agreed. It's, unfortunately, the most boring noodle dish that we have. And it's just like... People love it, I don't understand it. 
It's almost like I call it a leftovers dish. It's like you take your leftover vegetable, you take your leftover meat, and then you put it in noodles, and there you go. And then that's like the lazy sort of person's like lunch or whatever, but right? Here, it's more if you have a birthday, gives you longer life. You have noodles. This is like the yeah. That's a very Asian thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, just like oh yeah, noodles, long life and such. So yeah, so it's very. It's very customary, but it's kind of funny. We have the most boring noodle dish. I mean, yeah. out of all, like Japan has ramen. China has all kinds of different beautiful noodle dishes. Thailand has some nice noodle dishes. Boat noodles especially. Vietnam has pho. What do we have in the Philippines? Pansit. Ugh. And different kinds. Oh, the only thing is I would say palabok is good. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Okay. Agreed with that yeah. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. I think the jumping shrimp, uh, they were never really jumping to begin with. I'm sorry, people, if I, you know, clickbaited you here. But just know that it's pretty tasty. But if you cook it with some chili, if you, no, don't cook it. But if you put some chili pepper in there, I think it would be better. I think anything would be better with chili pepper. And so we're going to enjoy this family lunch. And then finally people here can freely talk. In their own language, unfortunately, I had to make them, you know, it makes me kind of a Spaniard just saying that to kind of like say, oh, guys, just like <laughs> simmer down now. You can't talk. So that ends the video here. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, that'd be great. I mean, tomorrow we'll probably be back on Ant Eggs again if you don't, you know, subscribe and help share. So um, signing off again. So I'll see you in the next video. The Empire Never Ended.